All right, Tank, it's Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. And we're I'm going to give out a list of things we're thankful for. I think you got a list, too. First yeah. off, I am thankful to do this with you once a week. You're a pretty good dude, and I enjoy our conversation. Absolutely. So I will say that to keep it real. Okay? Now, where does that fall? Is that number three or is that number one? No, that's number zero. That's just, that doesn't count. That's a non-qualifier for this one, all right? But either way, I do, I do appreciate you. You're my homie in that way. So, Absolutely. But now, to get to the football, all right? To the mm -hmm. football, here's three things I'm really thankful for. First off, Lamar Jackson. I, I mean, what else can I say? Lamar Jackson's the most fun guy to watch in all of football right now. The Baltimore Ravens, the big, bad style they play with, the swagger, and I think it's all because of Lamar Jackson. I'm thankful for the NFL pass interference debacle because as a guy who has to do a morning talk show, man, they always give me something to talk about. Yeah. Poor Unlimited Al Riveron. They, I mean, they screwed him. I mean, they changed the bar of what the pass interference rule is to be overturned, and everybody blames him, and yet I think he's taking taking orders from the NFL owners and the way it should be officiated from 345 Park Avenue. But nonetheless, he gives us great conversation on a week-to-week -week basis too, okay? And then my third one is defense. That's what I'm thankful for. And specifically, the 49ers and the Patriots. You know, other than the Ravens, the two out of the three best teams in football, and they're doing historic things in the age of offense and quarterbacks and completion percentage. And oh, it's all about the quarterback, and you can't win unless your quarterback's amazing. And I just find it refreshing that somebody else on the top two teams in football is getting a little credit other than the quarterback. Patriots and 49ers doing historic things on that side of the ball. Well, I was going to say that I'm thankful for doing this with you on a weekly basis until you basically stole my entire damn list, dog. Now I don't know how I feel about this right now. <laughs> but I will say this. Instead, I will expand it a little bit further than just Lamar Jackson, even though I had a lot of talking points on him. I think what I like most about this season is that we're creating new narratives and we're destroying like old stereotypes where most of the leading quarterbacks in the MVP race are black quarterbacks, whether it's Russell I Wilson. Lamar Jackson, you know, we have Patrick Mahomes, so I believe that narrative is starting to change. The best running back in the league is white, dude. <laughs> it's my right. man Christian McCaffrey, Stanford dude, and he is doing it. On, he's doing it in the run game. He's doing it in the pass game. I mean, he's basically changed what we look at as far as like a dominant back in the league right now. And then also at the same time, I feel like the return of the defense. The NFL is what I call real life fantasy football where the rules have changed to where you can't touch receivers right now. You can't touch the quarterbacks. It makes it so hard to play defense yet. You have teams, like you said, New England Patriots and the San Francisco 49ers that are holding teams at like 15 points or less in the lead today. And that's so hard to come by these days. Right? And so you really have to give credit to defenses that are performing at a high level and that could harass people on the offensive side of the ball when the league really doesn't want that to happen. And I think most importantly, and it really works out for y'all, is we've actually had some good prime time games this year. Like I remember the narrative being where whether it was Thursday night football or Sunday night football, you have some matchups that come either early or late in the season where they was just terrible. But let me go right. ahead and rattle off a few. Well, we had the first of the season. We had Houston at New Orleans, which is an amazing Great game. One. And then you have the Rams at Seattle, where that was a big shootout. And, you know, the fans love points. You run that back with Indianapolis at KC, where Indianapolis runs it down, you know, the Kansas City Chiefs throat. And, like, oh, my goodness, like, Mahomes in that Chiefs offense, I mean, that team has a weakness, and then they continue to get exploited, you know, when Houston comes up in there and does the thing like a week or two later. And then at the same time, Minnesota goes into Dallas where you have all these things going around about Kirk Cousins can't win a big game. We've seen some really good quarterback play, some really good defensive play. But like you said, most importantly, I think it's just great for me to be healthy and be able to talk about football on a weekly basis. And I couldn't think of somebody better to do it with than you, bro. I mean, we have a lot of fun, whether we're on camera or off camera shooting the noise and stuff. So definitely appreciative of the time that we spend on camera and looking forward to finishing off the season off hot dog. <laughs> Hey, Ebony and Ivory, together in perfect harmony. Right? You're my man. Happy Thanksgiving. <laughs> Happy Tucker Day, dog. <laughs>